everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is off to a great start for this week. Uh, it's been a lot going on with the river bro riverboat uh, rumble, brawl, whatever you want to call it, and all of the memes and the uh, excitement flowing from that. Uh, so many other things going on uh, as well. Uh, the uh, new move to cancel Jamie Foxx. Hell, he just got back. Uh, I mean, there's so many different things to jump on. Uh, but I'm here. Uh, as you know, I told you uh, toward the end of last week that we were pushing a fundraiser boost. We, the goal was to raise uh, $10,000 over the course of the weekend. I think we raised somewhere close to 300 uh, and so what I wanted to do is whether you give or not, it's absolutely necessary that you give. But what I want to do is I want to inform you. I want to give you all the information because I want to be. Uh, I want to be guilty of fulfilling my purpose in disseminating truth and in giving information what you do with it ultimately is out of my control and sometimes i get frustrated sometimes i get upset sometimes i feel like i'm just splashing in a pool somewhere a puddle somewhere and the ripples aren't going any further than the puddle uh, and then every now and then i'm reminded of the impact i'm having by meeting people whose lives I've literally saved by having conversation with young men whose lives I have helped to change uh, by literally speaking with mothers who were at their wits end and knowing that I did something to help. So I am going to continue to do what I do, but I, I, I want to touch on some things because to me, the thing that and, and don't get me wrong like i said this morning the excitement that's going along with uh what happened in montgomery alabama uh is a justified excitement it is something that was necessary a message needs to be sent uh but there are more messages that need to be sent beyond that and and so my thing is it was definitely the excitement w was definitely justified but i would love to see the excitement transformed into inspiration inspiration to not just defend ourselves physically but to be uh, adequately prepared to take on the nefarious machinations that are put forth by this system. This is not just people hating us. This is a system designed to keep us off balance and at bay. It is a sign. It is a system designed and engineered to disrupt our growth and retard our efforts in, 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 in pursuit of empowerment, in pursuit of wealth, in pursuit of social stability and economic stability. It is immensely important that we understand this in great, in great detail. This is why I've committed 30 plus years of research and writing and lectures and disseminations and interviews and program development, program implementation, because we are in a deficit in every freaking area. We are in crisis in many areas. And what I want to talk about is one specific area where we're in crisis and we seem to be far too casual about it for me. And that is in the area of mental health as it pertains to primarily our youth. But mental health in general in the black community is looked at and, 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 and we say, yeah, man, that, that's, that's serious. That's something that we need to be concerned about. But when it actually becomes time, when it comes time to actually confront it and deal with it, we shy away from it. We move around it. We 
act like we don't know what's going on. We pretend it's not there as if pretending is somehow going to uh, eliminate it, 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 uh, its existence. And so we don't want to talk about it. It's like so many other things that we have swept under the rug, like incest and childhood molestation and, and, and childhood sexual abuse in other areas that we swept on the rug for decade after decade and, and, and dare these babies to say anything even after adulthood and push that trauma forward. We don't like dealing with elephants in rooms. But they come back to cause massive damage when you don't confront them, when you don't deal with them, when you don't put, put it front and center. So here I am again, front and center. In the work I've done over the years, I kept warning you. We're going to have to confront this. We're going to have to confront this. We are in the midst of a crisis. How many times? Go back and look at the videos. Go to the, the site and read the articles. I've been telling you that we have a problem in the black community that rests upon the failure to properly socialize our children, to, pro to provide a proper identity, a stabilized foundation on which they could rest their self-image, their self-esteem, their self-awareness, self-confidence, and, 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 and from there build out and become. See, the whole thing is about becoming, but it's almost impossible to become when you don't know who you are and where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. And everything around you is telling you that you're anything but. And it doesn't align with you. And so you here you are. And we're dealing with mental health and mental illness. But more importantly, we're dealing with depression and specifically with our young black girls. Now, there's a big spike. I want to make sure we understand there's a big spike in male suicides uh, between the ages of 14 and 24. A 50, uh, 59 percent, 40, excuse me, 49 percent spike, almost 50 percent, a 49 percent spike in the last six years. But hey, that's not the biggest problem. We need to deal with that. That's huge. That's huge. And you got to think that, 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 that spike represents something significant. But what it doesn't give you is an adequate or accurate reading on suicidal ideations. Young black males who are thinking or contemplating about killing themselves. Because number one is they're less likely to report than women. So where we have a better range of understanding of where women are in their depression and women are more likely to become depressed, uh, but men are more likely to commit suicide. 80% more likely to commit suicide. So then this makes what I'm about to share with you even more baffling and disturbing. The greatest spike and the greatest rise wasn't in any form of black male suicide. It was in black female. And here it was, ages five to what? 13, 131% increase in spike over the last five years. Little black girls are killing themselves. Little black girls between the ages of five, five and 13 are leading that age category in suicides, black girls. Saying that, you know, what we did when we were kids isn't changing the fact that we're losing our babies. Talking about how we dealt with bullies isn't changing the fact that we're losing our babies. I'm going hard in the paint trying to be a part of the solution for this thing. But what we're going to have to do is, first of all, come together. We're going to have to unify. We're going to have to understand that we need programs. We need resources. We need an outlet for these babies to go to. We need a place where parents who aren't affluent, who don't have the financial resources to be able to take their children, who don't have insurance or who can't pay up front because not everybody takes insurance, we need to train more African-American therapists and counselors and psychologists 
because the, the here's what I'm gonna tell you. The Eurocentric idea of the psychological or mental experience is not all encompassing and the universal idea of what is, especially the Eurocentric idea of what is as it pertains to uh, universal life experiences, which is a part of what makes up your psychology and your mentality and your, and your, uh, your, your, your social makeup, it doesn't apply. Our experiences as people born as descendants of slaves in the United States is a unique experience that is nowhere else in the world. You can't go anywhere else. There has been slavery all around the world, but there has not been chattel slavery outside of the U.S. and the Caribbean that can even come close to what we're talking about here. And so the fallout of this experience and the continual encroachment upon the the, the, the mental and emotional security and safety of our our ancestors and our elders and then us and now our children is playing out before us in real time. We're not just dealing with tra trauma. We're dealing with implicit memory, tra traumatic memory. We're dealing now with not just post-traumatic slave syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder. We're dealing with complex trauma. The difference is complex trauma is stacked trauma. We're not dealing with one traumatic event, which people are treated for for years and medicated for for years. Soldiers spend years trying to get over one traumatic event. We are literally having traumatic event after traumatic event after traumatic event stacked on top of it we're not getting the resources we're not getting what we need and then we're expecting our children to come out of this healthy hole and perform at a level that takes us to another level and we're wondering why we can't get going it's because we're not dealing with this thing <laughs> this trauma playing out multi-generational trauma adverse childhood experiences all of these things are in us in this one big conglomerate mess that a child who doesn't have the mental or emotional maturity is trying to navigate now add in social media and its massive reach and its constant presence so there's no way see when we we talk about bullies but see when we went to school if that was a bully picking on us number one we were, we were probably told punch him in the face punch her in the face and they'll normally leave you alone you got to stand up to the bully we're told that but here here's the problem Bullies didn't have leverage like bullies have leverage now. We have to be aware of the environment that our children are in and understand that while we would like to think the, that, that our children have the same level of security and safety we had, they don't. They're exposed to a lot more, way more than they can possibly manage. They are constantly, their gates are constantly being bombarded with information that's sending them mixed signals about themselves. And if we haven't anchored them in a true identity of who they are, they are going to suffer. But let me get back to the bully. See, when we went to school, if there was a bully, even if we were afraid of them, we didn't want to confront them. We just needed to avoid them for six hours, seven hours, tops eight hours. Then get home. And if we didn't want them, and we could avoid them. And so, it, but there's no break in it now. See, I'm not just in jeopardy when I'm at home. I'm always there because now they're talking, they're on TikTok, they're on Instagram. And they are recruiting other people who don't know you to hate you now i know and many of you know that that vitriol and anger that comes from the bullies because they don't like themselves they are not truly secure in who they are 
So they need to find someone that's vulnerable to dominate in order to feel good about themselves. That's a whole nother story. But what I can tell you is that there's no relief for this poor child who's going back and forth. And what we know now, I told you that about this four years ago. And uh, Mary and I even came and came on five years ago or so ago and told you about the importance of guarding your kids on the screen time. This isn't new. I didn't just pop up. This ain't something about Rick's just out there. Doc's been doing this for a minute and Doc knows what he's doing. I'm good at what I do. I don't take on anything that I can't master. I don't think it's anything I can't master, but I don't take on anything without mastering it. I'm not here to play around. I'm not here to, I'm here to make an impact. You don't make an impact dibbling and dabbling in anything. You make an impact by engaging and immersing yourself in it until you become good at it enough to make something happen with it. And that's what I've consistently done. And I've brought it to you and I've told you this. You've got to understand, Marion and I got on more than one time and talked to you guys about screen time. Told you how we were managing screen time with, with our kids. Now here we are, years later, and it's starting to work. But I told you back then that there's literally studies out there that Facebook, who owns Instagram, knows exist. They got the same studies that shows that one of the most dangerous places for girls five through t uh, teenage years is Instagram. Unrealistic image expectations hedonistic ideologies, no sense of structure of boundaries, no sense of value and self-worth and restraint, and predator after predator after predator. And yet these babies are still out there and they are exposed to it. Their little minds cannot help process it and they're losing it. And they're feeling the only way to escape this immense pain that they're feeling is to kill themselves. So you have to understand the whole dynamic about suicide. Now, suicidal ideation, the thought of killing yourself happens. In fact, the vast majority of people in this world at one point in time has thought about saying, has thought about, man, I don't want to be here no more. Then there are those who have stood up and thought about it and then thought about how they could do it. So you got suicidal ideations, you got suicidal ideations with contemplation, then you got suicidal ideations with planning, meaning that I am not only now thinking about killing myself, contemplating how to do myself, I'm planning on when to do it, how I'm going to do it, and I've set a date. And these are different stages that you, you can kind of be aware of if you talk to people. When people stop talking in the future tense, pay attention. When there are no long-term plans, when they stop saying on my next birthday, when they stop saying when I get out of school, when they stop saying, you know, for Christmas holidays, when, when, when everything is real short-lived, pay attention to where that date is. Be aware. Try to be, be aware. Be alert. And here's the thing, there's no guarantee because you can do all the right things and still lose that baby. But you don't want to miss things and you don't want to take things lightly when it comes to this. Be, be, be aware and listen, and this isn't just for children. Pay attention to your loved ones, spouses. Pay attention to your mate because I guarantee you, you'll know something's not right, but the last thing you're going to be thinking is they're going to take that life. You, 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 and then here's the, the, the rougher side. Those, unfortunately, of you who have lost loved ones, especially children or spouses, to suicide, you need to get help. You need to get grief counseling. Uh, and you need to get someone who specializes in that type of grief because it hits different. And it can have a number of different negative impacts. But I want us to be aware of what's going on 
uh, even though we are stretched resource wise, I'm, I'm going all in on this because it scares me uh, that the future that we have for our children is going to be this bleak. Uh, and I think the thing that troubles me the most is how casually we tend to approach and deal with it. Uh, I am immensely concerned with the casual nature of how we are confronting many of the enigmatic issues that we are facing as a collective. It's as if we're in this uh, Dr. Uh, Cleo uh, Monago uh, normally says we're in a trauma trance. And I think that is such a good sort of visual or definition or explanation of where we're, it's like we're in this trance created by trauma that disallows us to be able to interpret and reason with the things that we're facing. And so we become stagnant and inactive and unpurposed and we tend to move toward what what's a good we, we escapism anything that makes us laugh anything that excites us anything that takes our mind off of this dark dark place this this space that is all consuming and destroying us from the inside out it's time to stand up it's time to make a move it's time to do something different uh, again, whether you give or not, we're going to have to confront this thing or it's going to get uglier and uglier and uglier. I mean, we, we got black women jumping from buildings and that's not normally how women commit suicide. Jumping and shooting yourself is a male thing. Women normally take pills. we have seen some things and we're getting more and more hangings from these little babies they're hanging themselves we are in a bad place and we're way too casual uh, but I just had to shed some light on that I mean 131.1% spike in suicides from 5 to 13. And the big focus really on 5 to 11, but they've got these different intersecting groups depending on the study. So I cover all the studies that in this area. So it's 5 to 13, but you know, most of them are 5 to 11, but some of them are 10 to 13. And so they sort of intersect. So I just say 5 to 13 because there's a large intersecting number in that little cross section. We've got a problem. That old adage that blacks don't kill themselves, throw that out the window. There's a spike in depression among black men, spike in suicide among black men, but there's also a spike in suicide among young black girls. So we've got a real concern for young black males ages 10 to 24 up to 30. And we have a major concern for young black girls ages 5 to 13. We've got work to do. I will continue to offer different wraparound services in the mental health, mental illness area through the Odyssey Project. Um, obviously, the more fluid parents are coming directly to me and hiring me to work with their children. Um, which helps because a portion of that comes back to help those who can't afford. Uh, but obviously I have a business to run and, you know, a family to support. So uh, it's only so much that does. But we have work to do. I mean, and if you research some of the stories about little black girls killing themselves, read those stories. See, they come, it doesn't just land on my desk. The story lands on my desk, too. These babies, elementary age babies, burdened with something so heavy they want to take their lives.
we can't keep sitting around, sitting around doing what we're doing. But anyway, either we're going to get it or we're not. And what scares me is that, you know, there once was a time that I was 100% certain that we would get it. I'm starting to question it now. But nevertheless, I'm committed to being everything that I possibly can to my family, to my community, to my race. Uh, I will continue to do so in any way I possibly can uh, again. We're still trying to hit that $10,000 mark that was set for you to end yesterday. We're still going to push for it. So I'm challenging you to reach in and give. Uh, but even if you don't, we've got a problem. And we are going to have to find a way to deal with it. On that note, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.